The big issue, of course, is we're going to have to get our streets right. The woman in the uh, top photo, perhaps the last remaining pedestrian in Missoula, went back three days later and photographed her. She was still there. Uh, now, the same road, by functional classification that you see down below, costs less to build and builds a huge economic base. It's more aesthetic, it lowers blood pressure rather than raising it, and it moves more traffic. So why build the road on the upper left? And uh, so when we get down to grade on the uh, Marine Drive and Dundere, we realize why it's making so much money. They're building place and celebrating all the reasons why people would want a town center. This is really the transformation we're going to need to make of a lot of our five-lane roads. But it can start with small projects. This is a small area in a town I won't mention. And uh, I'm now going to do an overlay of another town, this one in Monterey. You can see where the old curb line was. This little pocket park uh, really helped prime the life into four commercial buildings here. And as far as you can go into the uh, neighborhood, a five-minute walk uh, for convenience, all homes go up in value. So when people ask, well, how are we going to build these things if we don't have enough money, the question we really need to pose is how can we not build these things and therefore have more money? That truly it's the economics, it's the finance of a place that's going to determine whether we're successful. So this is what we end up doing with zoning uh, to create the linear strip format, stripping the life out of downtowns. This is the future, as uh, predicted by Michael Freeman, one of the uh, great town planners in America. And now I'm going to show you what that looks like on a map. Not every place would become a village, but uh, there would be villages of different size and scales. And this will apply to so many Colorado towns up and down the Front Range and throughout the entire health district. Now we go to one that's in transformation. This is on a five-lane road, the King's Way in uh, Burnaby, which is in British Columbia. And uh, when I first got there, I saw the buildings that were now capturing the corners to watch over the street. I stepped behind these buildings at that point in time, see where they're going to put the sidewalks, the tree wells, the parking. The stores are still open, and we're, we're doing fine. And then uh, I go back three years later and see the finished product. Uh, beautiful places to live, to walk, to shop, to be entertained, and now a thriving economic place that makes transit successful. Walking, of course, is successful in one of these uh, human-scale villages. Now, they're ahead of us in uh, the Vancouver Burnaby area. Uh, this particular model includes over seven of these towers, but you can see the street scale is very, very uh, appropriate to people wanting to walk, bike, drive, use transit, and so on. Another city in transition is University Place, Washington. This was the before scene. Uh, uh, we did a charrette, and one year later, that street looks like this. If we go uh, fast forward in time, nine years later, the street looks like this. Uh, by taking out the center lane and putting in turning pockets and all the sidewalks and bike lanes, the retail life increased 30%. And uh, truly, within a year, they were seeing these kinds of changes. And again, going back in time and then coming forward in time, we see that uh, livability, walkability, transit-friendly are all working. Now, it's only nine years later, and we're seeing the uh, city is about to open or, or in construction for its library, its new city hall. They're putting in back and angle parking. They've torn apart the street again to get the next tools in. And, uh, and truly, uh, this is a city that is transforming from a suburban 30,000 population into a modern uh, place that's now going to draw in a huge amount of the competing uh, market force. They're expected to be the second highest retail area in the, in the area. That brings us to the whole notion of how do we now complete our streets. It's a big movement that's a, a, alive in America and um, it's going to really help us a lot. I am in Los Angeles. This was a statement made just a little over uh, 38 years ago. Uh, but today, a modern traffic engineer has a totally different view on what it's going to take. Instead of building for more traffic, we now build for more people 
and start to reduce the vehicle miles traveled. Again, uh, I believe this is Parker, where I took the photo, and uh, Madison, Wisconsin, down below. Uh, it's not weather that uh, determines whether people walk or bike. It's really whether we build the right infrastructure. Now, this requires a new way to look at street planning. Instead of uh, doing a corridor study, we broaden that to um, a, a whole series of blocks and truly now look at what the neighborhood needs and then build the street according to uh, the, the desires and the needs of a neighborhood and still handle regional traffic. I want to first say that back when gas prices were low, $2.30 here it looks like, that this is the same road shot from a bucket truck pointing the camera one direction, rotating 180 degrees, and show that one town picks a total car saturated picture and the other town picks a people focused the people focused town is making immense uh, additional money over the uh, town uh, that chose to build the car route 66 uh, all the same drivers all the same funding source and the same street guidelines so what would a complete street look like well um, the front range is built a lot uh, but some of the key points to get the, the concepts down, narrow the lanes and set that as the default, that there should never be a lane more than 10 feet until or unless there, there's a reason for an exception. Lots of bus traffic or very heavy saturation of trucks. Make the uh, uh, medians and bike lanes a, a common treatment to set a buffer or separation from the sidewalk, uh, planter strips. All of these will help pull down speeds and create uh, more value on an adjacent road. In fact, as you go through and look at each of these things, these are all Grandview Drive, uh, this corridor increased the value of homes over uh, 40%, uh, at, at the same time doubling the increased value over uh, homes in the greater area. It was all done by getting good street designs and getting the community to understand the benefits, to work through uh, better roads, better solutions and dealing with harsh terrain here we have to attach the sidewalk to the the curb line due to the vertical drop-off but it's the bike lane that saves walking and helps keep down the speed by creating a narrow profile street we can also transition roads and we do it in stages start with uh, just using paint and then over time as we get uh, buildings ready to be built and built then do inset parking and uh, uh, work in, again, strategic areas. Hamburg, New York, this is a state road, Route 62 through New York, a truck route, and we put in nine-foot lanes, uh, took out all the traffic signals and put in roundabouts. And, and here's my point. It works. It works for everybody. We can go to the worst-case scenario. A truck is parked. Another truck needs to get by. And what the semi-tractor operator would say is, it's better for me because everybody's now driving a decent speed and I have plenty of control in my nine-foot lane. Same with school bus drivers. And again, this is a state road that had been designed one way uh, and then we were able to get to the plans quick enough and make the modifications. So that now children can get to school, people can go shopping. This uh, village, Hamburg, went from rated number 12 out of 12 villages to now they are number two in the entire region. A couple of other things that must be addressed. If we're going to have uh, streets that work for all people, we've got to get homes to face the right direction. Sidewalks and crossings, sure. Landscaping, of course. But we have to get the buildings to watch over the parks, to watch over the schools, to watch over the streets if we're to have people walk. So. We've covered a lot in this session, but I think the point I want to leave is that uh, we all have a lot to learn together. No particular discipline has all the answers, uh, but collectively we can figure out how to take out excess lanes when we don't need them, make the street safer, easier to get across, do it in snow country, uh, realize that we have a lot of road diets. That I think every one of your communities, I know many of them because I've worked with you on many of your communities, uh, have potentials for doing these very simple, uh, very low-priced, uh, low-cost ways to start to um, add value to the land, uh, build back a small, small ma pa industries that will work, and to use all the modern tools that we're now learning about. Uh, this one I'm most proud of, La Jolla Boulevard, 
in San Diego went from five lanes and 40 or 50 mile an hour speeds after transition two lanes, lots more parking, took out all the signals and stop controls and put in roundabouts. And now people get home sooner at a much lower speed. We've increased the sales by about 30% in a quarter, so the city's making vast new money. And uh, finally, to get to a few key critical points, we cannot hang our engineers uh, out to dry. We have to have new standards. That's what I've been doing here in uh, uh, Los Angeles area is with uh, another health district helping out paying the cost. We pull together the best experts in the nation to create a new street design manual that comes up with uh, the additional tools. And one of the things we're able to find is the language to support these additional tools is quite often already in the, the, the national guide. So in the last two days, these are the folks who came together. We had over 30 people, uh, the top designers, engineers, planners, uh, landscape architects, uh, drainage uh, folks in the nation figuring out how to build a new street. They became very passionate about this, I think, uh, early in their careers. Uh, I think some of those folks in your audience are, are uh, their equals, uh, but these are your peers, uh, the top, top thinkers in transportation in America uh, coming together, paid for with health funds to rewrite the street design guides for all of Los Angeles uh, communities, over 80 communities. But each community must now go and adopt them. We also now realize we have to get the health uh, uh, communities uh, to engage neighborhoods. That's where we're going to get the work done. And I'll close with this image. Uh, beautiful surprise as I've traveled around and worked in many communities. I got to Bend, Oregon, uh, took a few uh, shots as I saw this group coming along, and then stopped and chatted with the teachers and the children. The teachers are taking the children out to teach them city design. This is where we have to begin. We need informed consent. And the way you start is at the youngest age so children understand how buildings work, streets work, and everything else. And here's why it's going to be important. The people in this town don't have uh, sidewalks that they can use. When we take a look at the whole picture, we realize, well, there is a sidewalk but it's on the wrong side of the street. It's on the side of the street where no homes are, where no one would object. And even after the sidewalks were built on the right and people cannot get to them because of the design of the street, the neighbors came out in opposition to having a sidewalk on their side of the street, which was going to be paid for uh, with uh, some funds that were already categorized. Uh, we have to start to speak a universal language. We have to start young, but we have to have very effective, very powerful, uh, ways to get uh, work done. So a uh, quick, simple closing graph uh, or chart. We um, have gone through this cycle, hired the best land use planners who produce growth, and then the best transportation planners, and created a cycle that is not sustainable and is not healthy. And we've been doing this for well over 30 years. So we know to toss this model out, but what will replace it? We still need the land use planners, and we need better training. We need more transportation planners and better training. But now here's the big deal. They need to live under one roof. And now that you're all deputy uh, health professionals, uh, perhaps you can work in each of your communities to make sure that uh, we get the growth that we want. We grow sustainably, healthy, and uh, economically, but we do it because we grow for those things that are going to meet the future demographics, the future health needs in our nation, and uh, give us a really great communities that we're proud of. Thanks, folks, for uh, allowing me to be part of your presentation.